As I mentioned in the previous video, anything you type into the chat box is known as a prompt. A prompt can be an instruction or a command such as create a six month contract or it can be a piece of information for context. For example, the graphic designer I want to hire must have at least three years commercial experience. There are three main types of prompt you can use. Zero shot prompts, one shot prompts and few shot prompts. A zero shot prompt is one that provides no examples of how to perform a task. For instance, if I say please make a cup of coffee, that's a zero shot prompt. I'm depending on your existing knowledge of making coffee to complete the task. And if I ask the AI to write a poem about spring, there are also no examples provided in that prompt. So the AI has to rely entirely on its pre-trained understanding of what a poem is and what typical spring imagery may include in order to generate a poem about spring. Now, in many of my videos, I use zero shot prompting. I do this deliberately to show how advanced the AI actually is, because it's able to derive meaning and context from very little text. Zero shot prompts work as long as the task is simple. You can always use follow up prompts to regenerate the content or make adjustments. For example, if I say to you, this coffee is too weak, please make another, but this time use the espresso pods. That's the equivalent of a follow-up prompt, which I'm using here to ask for the task to be performed again, but differently. However, if the task you want the AI to perform for you requires specialized knowledge or a specific format, zero shot prompts are pretty ineffective because we need to provide the AI with some examples of what type of output we want. For example, let's say you want to change a list of dates into a specific format. A zero shot prompt would look something like this. Convert March 14th, 2024 into ISO 8601 format. If we don't provide the AI with an example, the AI may not know that particular format if it's not in its training data. And even if it is, the AI could still get it wrong if the format is inconsistently used in its training data. This is where one-shot prompts come in. One-shot prompts contain one example of the type of output we want. We can avoid the formatting issues in the previous prompt by using a one-shot prompt, like this. Convert January the 1st, 2019 to 2019-01-01. Now convert March 14th, 2020 into the same format. Here you can see that the one-shot prompt includes an example of how we want the output. Providing an example is crucial when dealing with things like standards that may not be universal or that may have multiple valid representations. For example, a one cup measurement in the US is 240 milliliters, but here in the UK, it's 250 milliliters. That's the problem with standards. There's so many of them. So if there's any chance of the AI interpreting something wrong or in a different context, use an example of how you want the output. One-shot prompts are also ideal to use when you're dealing with your own custom data. Let's say you have a list of nine digit numbers and you need the numbers to be presented in three blocks of three digits. You can use a one-shot prompt like this. Here we've given the AI an example at the start of the prompt to show the AI how we want the output formatted. That's a one-shot prompt. And then we have few shot prompts. These are prompts that provide the AI with multiple examples so it can perform a task. Let's say we want to generate a program that generates book titles for a specific genre. We could use a few shot prompt like this. Genre science fiction. The galactic frontier. Stars beyond the horizon. Echoes of a distant tomorrow. Genre romance. Whispers of love. Forever in my heart. The Last Dance, Genre Mystery, The Forgotten Clue, Murder at Midnight, The Silent Witness, Genre Horror, Shadows in the Mist, The Haunting of Willow House, Cries in the Dark, Input Genre, Fantasy. These examples give the AI contextual clues to help it understand the task. The prompt ends with a new genre, Fantasy. This tells the AI that it is expected to generate similar style titles for that genre. And here's the AI's output. Genre, fantasy. One, the enchanted realm. Two, dragons of the eternal flame. Three, the sorcerer's heir. You don't have to enter things in brackets, by the way. You can simply type what you want the AI to do next. For example, you could type something like 
please generate the following genres, fantasy and satire. When it comes to prompting in general, the more specific you get, the better the output is going to be. If your prompt is vague, the more complex the task is, the more vague the output is probably going to be. If you ask a human to perform a task, the more complex the task is, the more information you're going to have to provide if you want the task done correctly. For example, if I ask you to create a six-month contract for a graphic designer that I want to hire, you'd probably have a list of questions for me. Things like, is the work remote or in an office? Does the graphic designer need to live in a specific location or can they live anywhere on the planet? What are the terms? What about pay? What hours are you expecting them to work and for how long? What about the work itself? What is expected of them? What about experience? What if they want out of the contract before the six months? Etc. The point I want to make is that the more context you leave out, the more the AI has to assume. So don't expect it to give you exactly what you wanted if you don't give it all the information it needs. Luckily, when it comes to prompts, you don't only get one go. Instead, you can respond to the AI's output with more instructions or context if you're not happy with the output or if you want to expand or improve the output. For example, you could type things like Generate 10 more. Make the article simple enough for a 12-year-old to understand. Write it in the first tense, etc. This means you don't have to write the perfect prompt right from the start. Instead, type everything you can think of and then tweak as needed. It really is just like a conversation with another person. It's interactive and it can be incremental, meaning you can add meaning and context as you go, just like we do in human conversations, in order to shape the output. Okay, in the next video, we'll cover the art of crafting effective prompts.